The Dark Matter Collider 10 Keyless Mechanical Gaming Keyboard featured in today's review was provided courtesy of Monoprice. Monoprice's foray into PC gaming peripherals was quite an interesting development, and it hasn't disappointed. The Dark Matter Hyper-K Ultra Light Gaming Mouse is a top-tier performer at a great price, but it wasn't the only product to come out. Joining the ranks of the Dark Matter brand is the Collider Mechanical Keyboard. An assortment of different types of keyboards are available in the Collider lineup, and for this review I am specifically checking out the upper tier model with the Collider 10 Keyless Mechanical Gaming Keyboard, equipped with Cherry MX Speed Silver switches. Mechanical keyboards have become a staple of PC gaming, and the Collider is ready to join the ranks of other top offerings. The Collider, as I will be referring to it from now on in this review, comes in a compact box with a glossy depiction of the keyboard residing in the center. Along with the name of the keyboard is a sticker notating the included Cherry MX switch type to round out the front of the package. The sides of the package have a nice starscape, while the back of the package outlines more key features of the keyboard and a brief description of it. Opening the box you'll find the collider, USB-C cable, keycap remover, and finally a one-sheet guide to hotkeys for the keyboard and thank you note. The Collider comes with a closed, minimalistic design that foregoes any gimmick or extra buttons that could increase its size. For a 10 keyless design, this is an important thing in my book, as it helps save space in cramped gaming setups. Even the Dark Matter branding is kept small and resides within the space above the directional arrows. No single waste of space is to be found on this design. The keycaps in use are pretty standard and look aesthetically pleasing, with each one being clearly readable. The cutouts are also very clean and allow for the built-in RGB lighting to shine through. I am happy that even secondary characters are lit, unlike some other RGB keyboards. Under each keycap on my review unit is a Cherry MX Speed Silver Switch. A number of different switch options are available in the Collider lineup, including red and brown. The Collider uses a solid frame, and thanks to the inclusion of a steel frame to mount the Speed Silver Switches, features virtually no give when in use. The design choice also ensures that the Collider is one tough gaming keyboard and should withstand the punishment of even the more heavy-handed gamer. The heavier design also ensures the keyboard doesn't easily move during use, which is a plus. Another design choice to extend the life of the Collider is the use of a detachable USB-C cord that can be user-replaced if it gets worn out. The included cord locks nicely into the Collider and has a braided finish for a more premium experience. Speaking of premium, I want to take a second to appreciate how even after a month of use, my Collider still looks clean, with fingerprints being a minor concern for the build of the unit. The traditional keyboard feet offering an optional 8 degree angle of incline are also present. When I first started using the Collider, it took me a moment to get my bearings, as I have been using half-height boards for a number of years now for my main PC usage. Readjusting for the differences in travel distances didn't take long, and unless you also use half-height keyboards, this likely wouldn't affect you in the slightest. After my brief adjustment period, I'm absolutely digging the Collider. The speed silver switches feel great to the touch and trigger very quickly, allowing for fast typing and quick responses in games. Typically, I prefer more clicky types of switches like white, but the performance of Speed Silver might have just converted me permanently to the clacky side. Jumping into games, I was eager to see just how well the Collider would perform, and I have yet to be disappointed. In Apex Legends, movement responds accurately, and other actions trigger easily without issue. Hotkeys in StarCraft work like a charm, and it has been a treat to try and get myself back up to my old pace from an age gone by. But the real test for me is to load up Mega Man X4 and put the Collider up to the ultimate test of muscle memory. As an unsurprising result, it did great. While the stock look and performance of the Collider are already impressive, installing its software can allow you to take the experience even further. Within the software suite, you can customize numerous aspects of your keyboard from individual button mappings to programmable macros per key, even assigning mouse buttons to a key if desired. Thanks to the inclusion of profiles, any number of custom configurations can be saved for specific use cases. And then there is RGB lighting customization, and while you can manually select a number of presets on the keyboard itself, being able to fine-tune them is preferable. If desired, each key can be individually set for the ultimate look or utility in games. While I think that the Collider is a fantastic offering, there are a few nitpicks I have with it. First up is the lack of labeling for secondary function keys. From looking at the keys, you wouldn't think that there is any sort of media keys or RGB lighting presets. Well, there are but you have to refer to the included one sheet to see them, which makes using them on the fly a bit harder if you don't memorize them. I honestly ended up using my Stream Deck Mini for media functionality, as it was just an easier option after a while. My next nitpick comes to RGB customization. On most keyboards, you can assign a base color to apply to different lighting effects, so each key is always lit even when the effect is not in use. 
On the Collider software, most of the keys will remain unlit with the presets making them harder to see and use, which has resulted in me using more generic settings compared to some of my other keyboards. As I've said, these are nitpicks, but if they bug me, they may bug others. When it comes down to it, however, the Dark Matter Collider is a well-constructed, well-functioning mechanical keyboard that can find a home in any PC gamer setup. Thanks to its smaller profile, the Collider is perfect for more space-constrained setups or for those who have no need for a 10 keypad. Whether you need to type up a new review or play a round of Apex, the Speed Silver switches deliver with no compromises. The Collider's $100 price point also makes it very competitive with some of the other top offerings on the market. If you are in the market for a new keyboard, Monoprice has another banger here worth taking a look at. And this has been the Dark Matter Collider 10 Keyless Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. I've just absolutely been digging this. Even though I'm more of a fan of half-height boards these days, I just love the small form factor and just minimalistic design. It's just, I don't know, it looks good. It looks good in most any setup I can imagine. While I do have some nitpicks with it, uh, again, the RGB, I just have the generic wave on just so that way all the keys stay lit so I can see them easier, especially at night. But overall, solid board. And I mean, competitive price with what others are offering similar boards for. So while not as good of a deal as the Hyper K was for Monoprice, still a very solid performer and well worth looking into. But what did you all think of the Collider? Is a 10 keyless keyboard something that you are personally interested in or do you need to have your number key coming off the side here? This is honestly one of the first times I've used a 10 keyless board. And it was a little bit of a learning curve to get to the numbers up here, but overall I think it ended up being a really great experience. A great month of testing with this guy. Just busting out some reviews. Bust out five reviews on this guy. It felt great. But anyway, I digress. Thank you once again to Monoprice for sending out the Collider, the Hyper-K, uh, this monitor here that we're going to be getting into in the next couple of weeks. And thanks to all of you for for staying here and watching the full review. Really appreciate each and every minute that you all spend on the channel. Really helps us grow this place into what we've been trying to make it for the past seven years. And we're just so close to finally hitting those goals. And that's just thanks to all of you once again. Thank you so much. But now I do have a couple of favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that thumbs up or thumbs down button, just depending on how much you like today's video. And if you haven't done so already, sub button down here somewhere. Hit it. Helps us with that growth thing and hitting our goals and just making this place a success. Like, just still mind blown. Thank you all. Now, if you'd like to further help support the channel, you can also check out that join button somewhere down here or press that Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen when it pops up. A little really goes a long way and helps fund projects that we do here on the channel, including reviews from companies that aren't as nice to send us stuff as Monoprice has been. Was been. But huge, 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 huge shout out to all of our current backers. You are all freaking rock stars. We can't do this without you guys. Thank you so much for believing in what we do. But that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome and we'll see you back next video.